This is Radio TV Fauna Nut, and here's something that you don't see every day. This is a kitchen air made by the Radio Craftsman five tube radio housed in a metal cabinet. Now, as the brand name implies, this radio was made for kitchen use. It could be hung on the wall or sat on a countertop. When this radio was new, it had two glass shelves on the left hand side and two more glass shelves on the right hand side but unfortunately those are missing which I'm sure most of them are when you find these radios but when I got this radio it came with a set of red plastic shelves that someone made and they did a good job making them and, and to keep them safe I put them in a bag and hid them for myself now, a while back, I saw them during one of my cleaning out and rearrange days, and you know how it is. When you don't really need them, that's when you find them. Well, today, I tried to find them and couldn't lay my hands on them, and I got tired of digging for them. Like I said, that's always the way it seems to be. When you don't need something, it's there. When you do need it, you couldn't find it if your life depended on it. But... Maybe we'll find the shelves at a later date. But right now, let's pull the chassis and see what we've got. Here's the chassis. As you can see, just a standard five-tube series string chassis. Now, the Radio Craftsman later became known for high-fidelity tuners and amplifiers, but I think this particular radio was one of their earlier efforts. And looking at the underside of the chassis, I see a Sprague idle capacitor that someone has replaced. And this here's another electrolytic over here that looks to be a replacement. But other than that, it all looks to be pretty much original. Well, this power cord's probably a replacement. And this Sprague capacitor has a 30th week of 73 date code on it, so that tells us that this thing was worked on no older than 1973 here's the speaker as you can tell it has an output transformer and a filter choke mounted to it and I checked the cone and it's very crusty inside so that's probably going to have to be replaced well I don't know this may be the original cord based on the way this plug looks but yeah, we got put on lockdown this morning, so pretty much all only essential businesses, I believe, are allowed to be open, and we're only supposedly allowed to leave home for essential business only, so I figured it was going to come to that. But anyway, let's, let's commit the unpardonable sin in antique radio land and plug this thing in and see what happens. I will start it at about 60 volts and see what takes place. Now let's see if it smokes or works. Now we have dial bulb illumination. I'll kill the camera while it warms up and we'll see what happens. I really won't be surprised if it plays. Alright, I'm getting hum. not filter capacitor hum this tuning condenser still let's go ahead and clean the pot the volume pot and try to get this tuning condenser freed up no all right, we're feeding it with 120, and this radio is pretty sensitive. That's 670 WYLS out of over in Alabama coming in. They put 30,000 people in the dome. They're going to make more money than school. And I was in the crater, headed to Okay, that's a pretty good start. Yeah, I'm checking the control grid voltage on the output tube in respect to cathode, and I'm getting about negative 5 volts, so that, that capacitor is not 
too terribly bad out of whack. It's probably going to get changed anyway, but it looks like our electrolytic, they only bypassed one section of the original cap. And the spray is 100 microfarad, which really is too big, especially since we have a filter choke here. We really don't need one that big. And this plate-to-grid coupling cap is a bit leaky. I have it disconnected and checking the DC coming out of it. It's about 4 volts. In the grand scheme of things, it's not as leaky as some that we've worked on lately, but it is leaky. We're going to go ahead and replace it. And even though this radio plays, I'm going to do a proper restoration on it since this is a bit of a rarity. And that's going to include replacing all of the capacitors and any resistors that are out of tolerance because we want it to play its best and be reliable. This is a 500K grid bias resistor for the audio output tube. It's reading 2.75 mega ohms, so yes, yeah, slightly out of tolerance on that one. All right, things are coming along very nicely here. And now we're about to address the filter capacitor. Obviously, the Sprague Atom is a replacement. And also, this one mounted on top of the chassis apparently is, too. You can see where they cut the red and blue off from it. Probably those sections were bad. There's a green wire coming out of our top mounted capacitor spliced onto the red wire, so this is obviously a replacement capacitor. And they used heat shrink tubing, so this probably wasn't done too terribly long ago. I mean whoever did it didn't do a do a horrible job. I've seen a whole lot worse. But I think 100 microfarad is a little bit too big. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, but we can save that capacitor for something that really needs 100 microfarad and go with a standard 5030 variety on this radio, and it'll be just fine. All right, here we are, re-resistored and recapacitored, and ought to be about ready to go. And a nice fresh new power cord to replace the old dingy dirty white one that had some hard spots in it. So in probably the not too distant future it would have started cracking and became a hazard anyway. So might as well go ahead and get rid of it. And here's everything that came out of the original chassis. Probably going to keep this Aerovox .047 at a thousand volt that someone installed. That's the chassis isolation capacitor and it has a 69 date code and it's one of the good molded type. I replaced it with a AC safety capacitor and I'll save this one for uh, when I need a thousand volt capacitor. Oh, so you want to blur out on me? That's better. And I'll save this Sprag Atom, 100 microfarad, 150 volt. Might need it and something. However, the rest of this stuff can go in my special parts bin known as File 13. We'll be done with them. And we now have the signal generator connected and set to 455 kilocycles. We're going to let it warm up a few minutes and then we're going to align this thing. And I know this thing's out of alignment because when I go off of 455, it gets louder. So this thing is actually coming in loudest at about at about 445 kilocycles. So let's get it back to 455 and tweak it. There's that one. Oh, that one's tight. That one's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, 
turn the output of the generator down. And do it again. See if we can get any further improvement. That was about good enough. That's about as good as it's going to get. And that's about as good as it's going to get. And now we're aligned to 455 like we should be. And yes, I know this generator is quite old. I also know that it's been overhauled and working correctly, so we don't have to worry about that. And I can tell the local oscillator is off because I'm at the top end of the dial, which should be around 1600, and we're getting the strongest signal at 1500, so we need to adjust this thing. And on this one, the tremors are on the bottom under here. Alright, this is our oscillator tremor, and I adjusted it to a little over 1600. Now we're set to 1500, and we'll now adjust this RF tremor to max if I can get it to turn. Looks like somebody's tightened it down. Alright, got that done, so let's do a little band scan and see what comes in. Deaths is realistic and sobering, but not inevitable. About 100,000. We have sacrificed a lot. The president's still not wanting it. Since that's what I'm going to most likely be listening to. Rich puts the cat back on everything. I'm Storm Team 11, meteorologist Stephen Bowers, WMER 93.1 FM and 1390 AM, Good News Gospel Radio. This weather update is um, the day. I'll wait a little bit later and we'll check this out. It's not quite late enough yet. All right, just for fun, I'm checking this old multi section cap that somebody put in here. Uh, this section's supposed to be 40, it's reading 27, so it's a bit weak. Now let's check the two that somebody cut off up close to the capacitor, I bet they're going to be dead. Alright, the red reads 59 and the blue reads 16. Let's see what those correspond to. Well, blow out on me again. That's better. Red's supposed to be 100, blue's supposed to be 20. So yeah, this cap is weak. Uh, and it looks like this capacitor is date-coded the fourth week of 63, so definitely a replacement. And the spray got them is supposed to be 100. It's reading 120, so that's pretty typical for a capacitor of that vintage. I'll save it for use in something down the road. All right, let's check the leakage of the, of the uh, paper caps we removed. First, this Aerovox 1,000-volt cap.
Nothing. Not a thing. Which is what I expected. Old Wax Cap 1, 47 votes passing through it. Old Wax Cap 2, one of the leads broke off up close, so we can't check it. Number 3, we got 97 votes on the other side of it. The next one, 80 votes. And the last one, 21 votes. So that's one of the better ones. All right, we're all alone in the dark with no fluorescent light. Let's do a little band scan and see what we get. It has resolved over $1 billion of tax debt for taxpayers. WSM booming in. And WWL out of New Orleans. I think that's working pretty good. And this old dragon speaker, probably going to have to replace it. The filter choke that's on it, I can probably eliminate that and replace it with a resistor if I can't find a place on the chassis or whatever. But I can't stand raspy sounding voice call dragging speakers, so we're going to have to come up with something else for this. Uh, 
got the transformer and choke dismounted, busted the speaker in the process, but it don't really matter. It wasn't any good anyway. I think tomorrow I'm going to try to find a piece of wood that I can cut to the size of this old deteriorating styrofoam, or I don't even know if they had styrofoam that far back, but whatever this crap's made out of. It's cracked and coming apart. You know, maybe I can get a piece of wood, mount a better speaker to it, and have a place to mount my output transformer and choke and be in good shape. I'm going through cleaning the tubes, and here's one that's branded K-Part IT&T, which IT&T is the company who bought K-Part, and that was the beginning of the downhill slide for K-Part before they eventually turned into a junk brand that was basically nothing more than cheap imported junk. Spin classes. Body All right, we're back on the kitchen air. Jizitsu with Paul Joyner. And I so much more. found no a speaker that would work. Pay only $20 per a month. four by That's six right. inch out of an old Zenith set. That's for everything. No I had to solder the audio the output transformer to the speaker frame, around. but I was Treat able to make it work. And fitness. The filter choke, I just mounted it to the original the fiber view. board or whatever this is made out of. Four seven. And I don't think it's going to get hot enough to cause any problems. Back up. News Talk Radio. AM barely gets warm. OX Meridian. And we're down here with the lights off, so we won't have interference. Yeah, just radio. See, this used to never happen. You didn't have dead air on the radio. Now it's just nobody cares anymore. Just get some crappy something out on the air and get people to buy advertising and that's all we care about. As long as they buy advertising, we don't care. Special report coronavirus update. A coronavirus outbreak at sea has led to some emergency action involving a U.S. aircraft carrier. Nearly 100 of the almost... YLS, so if that's coming in, we're in good shape. Let's see if we can get this mess back together. All right, here we are back together. Factor.com, releasefactor.com, or call 800 500 8384. Since 1964, Hustler Turf has been engineering and making the. and all kinds of stuff we would never do before. I think it is, you know, you're, you're right. There is a lot of fear. Back working again, and yes, this cabinet really does need to be sanded down and repainted. But the good thing about metal, that can be done. And maybe one day I'll find the red plastic shelves that somebody cut out to go in this thing and clean the cabinet up and redo it, and it'll be ready to go. But electronically, it's fixed. FM 
1390 AM, your good news comes for radio. Well, this is what we know right now. Governor Tate Reeves has issued a statewide shelter-in-place order. It will go into effect Friday, April the 3rd at 5 p.m. and will be in effect until Monday, April the 20th at 8 a.m. This order will be uh, taking care of individuals who are to stay at home except for limited allowances in the executive order when outside of their homes. People must follow social distancing guidelines and maintain a six-foot distance from others and avoid groups of 10 or more. Evictions are suspended, though people are still required to pay rent and make mortgage payments. All non-essential businesses are to stop all activities other than those necessary for minimum operations, like for payroll, health insurance, and security, and enabling employees to work from home. Uh, grocery stores will still remain open, and so you can still go get your groceries, so don't feel like you got to go and hoard everything now before Friday. Uh, those are still going to be open, and you can continue to shop regularly, so we don't need to hoard everything. We need to make sure we just get the necessities that you need and not hoard it. Social and non-essential gatherings in groups of 10 or more people must be canceled or rescheduled. Restaurants and bars may only be open for drive through curbside, and or delivery service. People may leave their homes only to perform essential activities, such as caring for someone in the vulnerable population, getting food or necessary supplies, and working from an essential business. Individual outdoor recreation is encouraged, but not group recreation or activities such as soccer or basketball games. Again, this is the Governor Tate Ruiz has just issued a statewide shelter in place take place on Friday, April the 3rd, beginning at 5 p.m., and be in effect until Monday, April 20th at 8 a.m. Um, again, all non-essential Businesses will be closed. Who would have ever thought something like this like would we'll have more details end up we taking place? Right here at WMER. Also, want to let you know about that they that there is a testing site going on today. Started today here in Lauderdale County. It's at the Bonita Lakes Mall at the old Sears service station. If you feel like you need to be tested for the coronavirus, call six zero one four seven four three seven seven five. Again, 601-474-3775, and you'll speak to a doctor, and the doctor will determine if you need to be tested or not. And if they feel like you need to be tested, they'll give you a confirmation number and a time to go be tested. WWE is underway Friday night on Fox, each and every... And we're going to get right back to some great gospel music right after this commercial break. Rain is a good thing, but lots of rain over a period of time can cause problems, leading to water damage to... to house partying, cliff jumping, or concert going. Whatever the situation, Velo's ready. Visit Velo.com now to find your retailer. Website restricted to age 21 plus tobacco consumers. Underage sale prohibited. Time crunchers. Run with us on a John Deere Z5. And for a minimalist AA5 circuit, thing sounds pretty good. All right, there you go. Another one ready to go. 